This is a beekeeper. Armed with his protective blue sweater, fencing mask, and smoke to calm the bees, he's gonna take us on a journey. A journey into the life, the care, and the magic of the honeybee. In order to rendezvous with this honeybee expert, we would be traveling from Barbados to Grenada, the Spice Isle of the Caribbean. We met up with Garvin Glaslo at the airport. He is the beekeeping expert we spoke of earlier and the subject of our documentary. Before we set off on our honeybee adventure, we decided to do some island exploration and were dropped off at the famous Granans Beach. So we took a water taxi into Grenada's capital, St. George's, before meeting up with Glasgow again. Surprised by the quality and price of the merchandise, Marvin purchased a few and we were on our way. One thing I love about the Caribbean is how much like a family we all are. Each island has its own individual characteristics, but we all live that island life. Survival depends on following the leader. In business, market leaders survive. Introducing G-Links Grenada Honey, the leader in a new experience of sweet satisfaction. Pure honey, pure Grenada spice flavor honey, pure Grenada fruits in honey, pure Grenada nuts in honey, pure organic honey, pure natural honey, chemical free honey, pure goodness, pure satisfaction. Your Grenada to the last job. We'll be showing you this adventure from the crossing of the river. Glasgow is the owner of G-Lynx Honey. His intention is to work along with other beekeepers of Grenada to improve distribution and marketing of this Grenadian treasure. Been up 
problema. Col polli curo verde. Now there's a velcro in the flap right, that you're pinning. Because it was rainy today, um, I brought some fire starter materials. Again, it's part of the project recycle initiative. Right? So an interesting use for some cheap paper from the office. We have a nice clear plume of white smoke that works well to calm the bees, is the word that's used. Um, while you're decked in white in Grenada, you would find a common practice among beekeepers is to improvise. That's the way because we have to watch the costs of operating. Beekeeping is actually an expensive exercise. Well, I see your, your, your choose the color blue instead of red, which um, makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a neutral color. Um, Project Recycle says I make use of a, what would have been discarded as an old fencing. <laughs> And I feel as secure as you are behind your white suit. That's wise. <laughs> All right, we'll go to one of the boxes right here. Well, I have to tell you, Mr. Glasgow, this is the first time I'm going into a beehive. Well, so I, there's a little bit of apprehension, but no, no. There's no need to be. What I have here are very calm bees. Mm -hmm. um, they are the aggressive kind that would have spot you all the way down by the river yeah. and charged at you. Right. A lot of my precautions going into the hive. Right. Going into the hive here, you stand behind me, stand behind the smoke. Observe and stay calm. Fair enough, sir. All right. This set has been a pretty fast group of builders. All right. So we apply a little smoke to calm them. You hear them buzzing. All right. This is a nice, healthy hive. Typically, not with the cover to get off the bees. We operate with a little caution because we don't want to crush, especially our queen bee. Yeah, this would have been the last frame I added. Yeah, we take it out with care. And as you can see, it has a very nice color. Right? The basically built, it, built out you would see when we did, did the earlier demonstration of the empty box that we started with a frame that was flat right the process of building has begun and is going pretty nicely they've filled this frame um, on one side completely and they started working on what's on the, the composition side. of this height um, these would be all workers there uh, well we we would have a variety of these in the house right um, of course, you have the primary mother of all, that is the queen bee. Mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be one. Typically, there is one queen bee in the hive. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have some males called drones. Um, they're the lazy boys, they're only there for good looks, they like the playboys. Uh, and then all the work is done by the smaller worker bees. Uh, uh, some of them uh, forage in the field. Some of them will be busy uh, doing the tending to the housekeeper, mm -hmm. so they clean up on the inside. Huh? These guys are in control in this environment. They work with nature and we simply cooperate with them to be able to give them the attention they need 
control the mites, control the pests, mm -hmm. right? Um, provide the optimal environment so that they could give us that sweet treat. No, it was Mervyn's turn to get his hands dirty. Mervyn, you're checking it out. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about looking? Obviously, he didn't know the type of cameraman he was dealing with. Not want to be out then, I also took a turn. We decided to visit a few other beekeepers which Laszlo spoke highly of so they could impart some of their guru type knowledge on us. You know, you, you, you wouldn't believe, huh? You're going to see um, in one of the slides, Mr. Marshall, mm -hmm. I said that I used to have my bees in the country. Oh, you, you remember I just told you about Moringa for you? Mm -hmm. Look before the Moringa. Okay. Right. And actually my bees, some of my bees used to be here, the young fellas to take care of it in this area right here. The first one we were introduced to is Andy Paul. Andy is an avid beekeeper that has been involved in beekeeping for years. This is the queen right here. Trying to get away from my house. Yep, she would try to get into a little hole where she can run and hide. So what you need to do in order to wreck queens is that you have to uh, manipulate your hive to want to make queens. If your queens uh, depends on what uh, method you're using, if your queen have a, if your hive has a queen, you really wouldn't want to make a queen, right? So um, sometimes about four days before, I remove the about five days before I remove the queen. And sometimes I remove some of the combs and I put combs into the hive with, with larvae that's just about to emerge, right? I showed you some of what the larvae look like. And um, that is because you want a very high population of nurse bees in there, right? Uh, the worker bees are in actually two categories. You have field bees and you have uh, house bees. The house bees are the younger bees. When they reach a certain age, they become field bees and that's when they go out and get the food. Next, we meet Jesse, a young beekeeper that told us how he got involved in beekeeping. Well, I got motivated through a course that I did at Coin France, you know, with my, one of my friends, he got the opportunity to teach the course. And I was lucky enough to go along with him in the bush, along behind bees and things before he got to teach the course. So I had an advantage over the other students. And from that, I, I find I could get my own hive. And I went, I asked him and he told me, well, bring a box. But he didn't want to really give me a hive. He wanted me to get a hive on my own. Can you give me one that I have now? Okay. So he gave me a hive. He told me, well, look at go on, how to get it out in the wild. And I went.
point I start taking out and some die, some survive until I keep splitting, splitting. I didn't give it up until I reach up today. I have a few hives, you know. And this guy so far, I, I wish that more Grenadians could have, you know, could invest into beekeeping mm -hmm. because we have the best honey in the world, right? We have the best honey, and also we have a we have a nice country where we can do beekeeping without having any bundle of pests, you know. Yeah. Apart from working, I'm self employed. You know, I can come any day. I don't have to take care of them like a retired sheep. While it, while they working, I could be doing something else. So it's like a side by like a pan choir, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And life lessons. Have you learned any life lessons from working with bees? Well, it helped me to be patient. You know, it, give, it help you build up patience. You know, wait and help you. You know, just it's just a, a form of meditation. Eh? Keep you in contact with nature. You know, it kind of help you to think a lot, use your brain, use the capacity of your mind, you know, think a lot. Because sometimes when you go, you don't have a book reading to see, okay, how this bee is supposed to get treated. You have to think, remember what you learned, and put it into action, you know. And it's a hands-on job, it's not that, if you do me keeping, how I will do it, if I send you in my hive, you may not be able to do it the way how I do it. I'm the last generation in my whole family from way back that doing beekeeping because my family lying in have beekeepers and I'm the youngest and the last one right now. Thanks Jesse. Mm -hmm. yeah. hey, then, then after, after lunch we at least go and see the mountain. It'll help you to frame in your mind and then on Sunday we'll come and do it. Great. Right? Lovely. On our way to the last beekeeper, we became hungry and stopped in the town of Grenville for lunch. After lunch, we met up with Belton Roberts. He is one of the most knowledgeable beekeepers on the island. He also teaches the skill at T.A. Marichaud Community College. Okay, um, the bees do the harvesting really. Mm -hmm. They just kind of um, beekeepers. Yeah. In the sense of that bees have wings and you cannot tie them like a sheep. Yeah. So to, uh, to be a beekeeper, you have to know how to keep them, to make them stay because they're free to go. Okay, so if you can keep them, Belton understands the importance of teaching others to carry on the tradition of beekeeping. Without bees, 80% of our flowering crops, which constitute a third of everything we eat, would perish. Belton went on to show us the ingenuity behind his homemade pollen trap. This is a high body. You see that? Mm -hmm. The high body with the frames and everything. And this is the pollen trap. Mm. The box fits exactly on the trap. So the bees, to enter the box, the bees have to go in here, okay, and go up through here. And this is the pollen extractor here, okay. this screen, mm -hmm. okay. This screen, you couldn't get this screen at the hardware store, I tried already. You have to add this screen from a bee supplier, okay. the exact size. Mm -hmm. When the bees come through this little hole here, mm -hmm. the hole is just big enough to let the bee in, but the pollen's on the leg, mm -hmm. it would fall back on this screen and then fall into this basket. This screen here so the bees won't go back after it again. You can go through this one. So the pollen go through here and fall in this basket here. And all I have to do in the evening is pull this basket out and empty it and push it back. See? So that's simple. This is the only working part. These holes here is for the drones. The drones too big to go through here. So you give them two drone escapes so they can go. I understand that you are Grenada's um, professional beekeeper. How long have you been oh. beekeeping? Oh well, um, yeah, I'm professional, yes, but um, you have fellows that does more than me. Mm -hmm. so due to the time when you are beekeeping, you need a lot of time to spend with the bees.
After finishing all the interviews, we decided to take a trip to the rainforest to capture the feel of the place and plan what features we would focus on in the next shoot. And it gives great contrast. The auditorium. Yeah, from uh, the experience we like, have going under the canopy. The amphitheater. Yeah, uh, this is an excellent panoramic view. On a, on a clear day, the vista is astounding. Right, the highest mountain on the island, Mount Saint Catherine, over to my left, and then this wide panorama, uh, giving you that airy feel, that feeling of in charge, airiness, and the. Operative word for me, I would place you in a sea of green. Can't miss it. Unfortunately for us, the night fell. For the Grenadians, it was all cool. But for us, there are many horror stories that have started this way. Right, over there, behind the bushes, hardly discernible, is Charlie's Hall. Let's see what the experience would be like daytime when we come on Sunday. Join us next time. Will we make it out alive? No Mervyn falls so hard he shifts the Earth's axis. Is the Grenada Reinforce Adventure one of the best we've ever had? Find it all out in the next episode of Green Finger.